welcome back to Red Hawk Media. Today we're continuing on with the game manager, and this is part two. Um, we're picking up where we left off from uh, previously. And what we got done earlier, if we take a look here, is we've got some switches um, that are now activated. And um, if you don't activate the switches, if you come over to the door here, which is the exit door, you cannot leave. It's blocked. So there's actually a collider on here that's activated that won't let us get through. If I go over though, and I take a look at this, and I trigger the switch, if we watch the exit door over here, we'll see it opens up. It recognizes that all of the switches have been tripped in the level, and then that door is now open. The door lock is also off. Let me see if I can sneak through here real quick. There we go. All right, so now the door lock is also off, and this is a good time to kind of take a look at some of the other things that are in the game now. You can see that we've been working a little bit. Okay. We've got some um, uh, a number of different items that are going on here. We got enemies that'll take hits. They're patrolling. Um, we can melee them. They can melee us. I'll just show you that real quick. When they get within range, they shoot, and then they can melee. And it takes life. And when you get away from them again, they can shoot, and then they follow you wherever you go. And they can be quite irksome. But now you can see that we're actually into the exit door here, and this will allow us to go to the next level. And that's what we're going to set up today. So let's make quick work of this. Okay, let's get started. Um, we're going to go through this process from the very beginning. In order to proceed, you need to get all of the downloads from the description. So you'll have to go back to the description, get the download, and that's going to have everything that I'm going to reference here in the upcoming part. So beginning we want to get this all organized with all of our doors in one spot like I already showed you so let's um, start with an empty object create empty and we're gonna name this game object uh, level doors or you can call it just doors whatever you want okay once we've got that object um, one of the first things that you got is in your prefabs you have two prefabs you have an entry door and an exit door. Let's go ahead and drag both of those into the level doors object here. So I'm just going to add those on as children here. Drag those in. Okay, now I've got both of those in there. Here's my entry door. And you can go ahead and line that up wherever you want, uh, wherever you're going to put your door. Okay, get that all organized. And uh, now the exit door. Let's get that set to where I originally had it here. Now these doors may or may not fit your tile set. If they don't fit your tile set, um, they're pretty easy to switch out. So that's the next part I want to show. If you don't need to switch out the doors, then you can go ahead and skip over this next part. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the doors here. If you're unhappy with the current sprites that we've got in here, there's an easy way that we can swap those out. Um, so if we take a look at um, the entry door, now you have to drag them into the scene first for this to work. So we've got our entry door prefab here. And what we can do is we can actually go into the animation and we can switch out the different sprites. So the entry door and the exit door are made up of several different parts here. If you look up here, we've got a door locked, door unlocked, and door open. And if we look at the difference here, it'll show you the sprites for each of these different things that are going on here. So if I want to switch something out, I can go ahead and switch to whichever one, for instance, the door locked, and I can grab the sprite of my choice to put in there in place of that. So let's say this is level number two, for instance, and I want the door locked to actually say two on it. I can bring that up here and I can update that. So now that will actually show number two. Now this is gonna make a lot more sense. Um, this is my locked door sprite. So while all of the switches are still active or deactivated and I haven't activated them yet, this is the door that will show. Once I've activated all of them, it switches to the door open. And in this case, I just showed you a quick example of how you can take your own sprites that you create. So for like the temple, um, the Temple Run Desert Tile Set. That one doesn't actually have a door, but you could easily take and create your own sprite. And all I did was hop over to Photoshop here. You can see I created using the original tile block and duplicated that a bunch of times. This is my open door, let's say. Um, we could go ahead and add one into the middle, make it a closed door. I saved this as a PNG, and of course I put it into my Assets folder so I can get access to that. So now if I come back here, Here's that sprite, and I can take that and I can drag that in to update this area. 
okay? The prefabs that you will have will be the steel metal doors that are part of the robot tile set. So feel free to switch these out. It's as easy as that. There are three different sprites that you would have to create, though. Door open, door unlocked, and then door locked. So however you want to switch those up, that's completely up to you. Now, we're done with the customization here. We have to get these doors actually working for us. So we're going to go ahead, get out of the animation, go over to our scene. And now we have several things that are going to be in place. On each entry door, you're going to notice that you have an animator and you have the door script. It needs to know exactly what kind of door type it is. So make sure that on the entry door, it says entry door type over here. Now, for the entry door, you're probably not going to have a lock on it, so we can leave that as none for the game object here. Now, for the exit door, check the same thing on the door script. You're going to make sure that you have the exit door, and now we have to create this game object. So that's what we're doing next here. I'm going to go to the level doors, and I'm going to create an empty, and that I'm going to call door lock. And we're going to put that together. Now the door lock is just going to be a collider. The collider is going to prevent the person from actually going into the door before all the switches are activated. So we're going to go add a component, put in a box collider, and now that collider we're going to go ahead and edit it so that it actually matches up with the exact positioning of our door. So if we take a look here, we stretch this over, put this into position right over the top of the door. Now your exit door has also got another thing on it. It's got a trigger, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But we want this to be outside of the exit door space. And let me zoom in a little bit here so we can see what's going on. Make this nice and precise. And there we go. So now we've got that collider all set up. Again, this prevents your character from going into the door until all the switches have been triggered. Now I've updated that here, but I need to drag it as the door lock object onto my exit door. So I highlighted the exit door. I'm going to grab the door lock now and drag it into the door script here where it says door lock. And I've got all those items in there. Now I won't be able to actually go in there until switches are activated. Now, um, the other parts that we're going to add on to this to make it functional, we've got an entry door and an exit door. Obviously when you get to your exit door you want to be able to go somewhere. So if you look at the prefab here, you've got your new scene script, which is attached to your exit door. Um, right now it's asking for the level to load. I'm on level 1 of my game, which is RoboKid 1, and I just made the second level uh, RoboKid 2. Whatever you're going to call your second level, minus the dot .unity, you're going to put that name in here, and that will allow you to click on the door using the tab key to go to the next level. Okay, with everything in place here, we're going to go ahead and test this out. And I would draw your attention to the open door here and the closed door. Remember, we swapped out the sprite here for the open door. So when we play the game, it should actually change to our new open door sprite. And I'll show you what I mean here. Go ahead and hit play. And now we're into the game, and you can see the new one that we created is actually in there. Even though it didn't show up in our scene, um, it shows up in gameplay and it actually populates in there. And the locked door is actually uh, populated too with the new sprite. And we can see that right now the collider is working the way it's supposed to on the door. I can't get into it because I have one switch to activate. Let's go ahead and hop over here, get that switch. Now when I trip that switch, it should actually change the um, door 2 here to an open door. So we've got one step here, and I know exactly what it is, so we're going to pause, and we're going to head over. And this just kind of shows you, I guess, how these, um, these different objects are interrelated to each other. So the game manager is what is taking care of everything here. It's managing our switches, and let's not forget that it's actually managing our exit door as well. So if I grab my new exit door that I created with the new updated sprite, and drag that in there as my game object. Now it says none. We're back to exit door the way it's supposed to be. If I hit play at this point, we go back into the game. I'm going to go over here, activate my switch. Now close door, and now we've got my new open door up there. Now the other thing that should have happened at this point is now, if I can make this jump here, um, 
Now at this point, it should have opened everything up. And I'm just going to kind of run through this stuff to get over here. Um, I should be able to head to my second level. Now, keep in mind that if you added your second level on um, to the new scene script that we added on there, you have to be able to um, actually add it to the build settings. So now you can see that block is off of here, the door lock is off, and if I hit tab, I can go into my second level. And you can see I've done a little bit of work here as well. So we've got a lot of things ahead in the upcoming episodes to make this even more interactive. But now we can jump from one level to another level. We have doors that are opened and closed, locked, and they all depend upon the switches. And your game manager is a fully functioning thing. In the next one, we're going to talk about these handy-dandy enemies here that are fairly intelligent with some basic AI. And you can see when he gets in range, he can shoot at me. And when I get even closer, let me get on the other side of this, he can, whoa, let's try that again. He can actually, oh, I'm horrible. There we go. Now he can actually melee at me as well. But when I get further away, he'll shoot too. And then he has a life that I can interact with as well. And I can melee him. And then he goes to dying. There we go. Not bad. Well, thanks again for joining us for another episode of Red Hawk Media. Bye.